Alberta Parents Union, union in the uh, old-fashioned sense of the word of uh, people coming together for a common goal, uh, where uh, parents who want to have more of a voice, more uh, more impact in the K through 12 education system. So, uh, you know, I've been hearing from a lot of parents, especially over the last two years, uh, about how things have just gotten too big, too far away from the parents. Where we have a system that's uh, Design is supposed to be designed around uh, parental authority and around uh, parents driving quality in the education system, especially to the extent that the the money does follow the child to the school of the parent's choice. But that that started to erode, and we're getting away from that, and too much reliance on the so-called experts when the real experts on any individual kid are the parents of that kid. Well, that's it, and and we we have. I, I, I mean, just speaking for myself, one of the things I get frustrated with is uh, teachers unions or other advocates. It's all it's, it keeps pointing out all the time for things like for standardized testing. Well, every child is different. Everyone learns differently. And we, we can't have that standardized testing to measure. I, I kind of agree. That's fair enough. The parents know as well. Their ch children respond. This child responds to this. This doesn't with that. But if anybody talks about changing the status quo from a standard, well, then all of a sudden, no, 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 no. We have to keep the public system only one model, one curriculum, right. no matter what. And the parents are ignored. I, it's time to crack that double standard a little. Absolutely. And, and you know, if you were to suggest moving to the system that we have in education in any other area, including healthcare, by the way, where you take your, <laughs> your pile of taxpayer money with you to whichever doctor you choose, and the, the bad doctors go out of business because no one picks them. Mm -hmm. uh, if, but if, imagine, imagine that we said we're going to residentially assign you grocery stores and you have to go shop for groceries at the nearest grocery store. And it's a monopoly option. You don't get any other choices. Or if you do, you've got to pay for it again. You've got to pay the grocery store closest to you and then pay again for a grocery store that will actually serve you and, and meet your needs. Everyone would think that was insane, but because it's the status quo in education, it's, it, it's considered radical to violate it. Yeah, so you're looking at offering, you're promoting choice in education then. Yes. I mean, we've got a few options right now, charter schools, sure. and they're starting to grow and develop, but uh, they've got a great deal of limitations. So you're looking to expand more of those alternatives? Then? Yes, more choices, less limitations on those choices. You know, uh, I mean, it's like, so Alberta, uh, the only province in Canada that allows charter schools, and that's great. Uh, but it, it's like when we introduced them, we were almost afraid they would be too successful. They started out capped, the total number of charter schools, there, no online charter schools, no co-location between two charter schools. It's very it's regulated. All that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all this, uh, uh, all these, all these hurdles, like we were too afraid they would be too successful. And, and that's, that's so much of the uh, choice in education. It's almost almost afraid that it'll be too successful, undermine uh, uh, and, and uh, undermine the, the world-class public system when really it, the, we have a world-class system because of the choice and competition, like in everything else. Competition drives quality. And so even for the majority of kids that are never going to go to anything but a, but a fully loaded public school, the quality is driven for them as well by those other options being there. Yeah, and, and I mean, we're just seeing a lot of controversial subjects entering curriculums or getting into classrooms that not every parent is comfortable with. And when they, again, they're, they're, their children are essentially locked into one system, you have no choice or direction towards what they're going to be learning. I, I mean, uh, there's always going to be a core curriculum, I imagine. You have to have that. Sure. But, or core standards. At yes, least. yes. But with some choice, parents could choose to put their children into facilities that might not be putting some of that other messaging out there. Sure. Kids are not one size fits all. Education is not one size fits all. The idea that there would even be one one size fits all curriculum for four million Albertans uh, is 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 kind of crazy. So what we need is uh, for and 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 then if we if if all we can do is change these things from the top down, then then all we can do is have these super politicized fights where one side wins and one side licks their wounds and is going to get revenge the next time. And so the other option is pluralism and choice where, where we uh, empower parents to go to whatever choices and the choices that succeed are the choices we'll see more of. And, and that's how, that's how we, we get in 
just like in every other thing, like buying groceries, <laughs> uh, how we get quality. Yeah. So, I mean, what are the arguments against? And I'll, I'll throw that out there. It, sure. it, it, it grinds against some people's, I mean, you're talking something along the lines of like a voucher system. That's the term sure. that's used. The money's following a student. I, I think it's great. So, but one of the things some parents get upset with is saying, well, if you're in a rural community, you don't have the local options. My child won't be able to attend that, that diverse variety of things. And those resources will be pulled away from our communities. And, uh, they feel it's unfair and uh, that their child is at a disadvantage. Uh, how can you address that? Well, there, so there are fewer options in rural areas because of regulation, because because co-location, because, uh, because these things are, are difficult to start and maintain. We don't have that problem. So, I mean, look, when the, when the, like it or loathe it, when the government got out of the way and, and cannabis shops were allowed to pop up, they popped up all over rural and urban, it didn't matter. Uh, so in the same sense, when, when the government gets out of the way to allow education options to pop up, you know, uh, India has supposedly a uh, fully funded public system from the top down. But what's really helped India do so well in education is they've, they've got all these tremendously low cost private schools all over in every little town. Uh, and it's just because the, the government, even when they might've wanted to get in the way of that, have not been able to get in the way of it. So it's, it's let a thousand flowers bloom. And that's the sort of thing in our rural areas, it's the same solution. Yeah, and it's good. I mean, I, I, as I, you know, I keep getting back to, I mean, they, they, they try to talk out of both sides of their mouths, the, the, the defenders of the status quo. We don't want to label everybody. There's some fantastic teachers and, and, sure. and people within the, the, the unions even and so on, but absolutely. Uh, yeah, like speaking for myself, I, I was a pain in the butt student, low marks, low marks. My parents finally outsourced it uh, for some discipline and sent me to a, an all boys school in Shawnigan Lake, BC. And, you know, lo and behold, in a discipline environment, my shot marks <laughs> shot right up. Uh, but that's me. Another student might have responded terribly in that sure. environment and done very poorly. Absolutely. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's just that choice. It's that recognizing right. that there's differences and some people are more inclined to different fields and different types of learnings than others. And, and I, you know, I just, we're really doing our kids a disservice, I think, with this stubborn clinging to this centralized, you know, one, one, one size fits all system. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, because, uh, again, as with everything else, we know that more options, more choices, um, is the, is the way forward with better quality. It, it's, um, the idea, um, the idea that one, education minister or one educrat in, in Edmonton can know what's best for my child better than I do is, is frankly insane to most parents, which is why I thought it's important to get the parents organized around this, because I think it's just, it's just natural to most parents to realize that, that uh, there, may, there might be people more expert in curriculum development or pedagogy or any number of other things, but there is no expert, more expert in my four children, except maybe my wife, but I'd even argue that. Uh, I'll leave you to that. <laughs> but, but there is no one more expert in my children than, than my children's parents. <laughs> so getting that much inside though, uh, with the system, say where the funding was following the student, would that apply then directly to homeschooling if uh, parents choose that as well? I mean, the, the resources coming into the household to choose to be able to do that. Yeah. So there are there are some home educators that don't don't want that. They think they think that inevitably the money will come with more government control. We would obviously we would obviously say that the solution there is to trust the parents and to and to not bring that. But uh, but. I think I think that Alberta's model with funded and unfunded does make sense, so that you have that option for home educators who are who are afraid of uh, who are afraid of regulation following the money. Um, that that we have the unfunded option uh, for them, but but yes, absolutely. The um, look, um, just independent schools and uh, and home education between. Uh, 2008 and 2018 saved the Alberta government 1.9 billion dollars. So, so look, we can and 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 the the government is so so stingy with that 850 dollars they give to funded home educators, mm -hmm. um, and 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 seems like there are almost no controls on the 30 thousand dollars they give per student to say the Northland School Division, uh, which is one of the most failing school divisions in the province. We that. That's obviously so upside down. So we've got to we've got to trust the parents um, and recognize that we can afford to give more money, and it will save money uh, to to uh, to 
let people have these other options and make it more accessible to more families. Great. So your organization now you've got a you're traveling the province. There's a number of meetings and events yes. coming up. So so what are you what are you doing? I guess to bring this about to pro promote what you want to do. Sure. So, right. We, as you said, we're traveling the province. We just had a great meeting here in Calgary last night. We're uh, headed to Drumheller uh, tonight. And we've, uh, and, and so Drumheller will be the eighth stop. We've got uh, 16 or 17 more uh, uh, after that, trying to just hear from a broad swath of parents all over the province uh, to tell us what our priorities should be, what sort of advocacy they expect to see from us. And those meetings have uh, have been uh, have been going great, and uh, yeah. So we're the main way the main way we're promoting this is by email. So people can go to albertaparentsunion.ca, great website, and uh, sign up for the mailing list so that they can get our updates about that. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh, that that's our that's our main task right now is just is just hearing from the parents, and then we'll then we'll start the ball rolling on some of that advocacy. Great. And then with that advocacy, well, it looks like we're a year from an election. This is provincial jurisdiction. Yes. Uh, for what you would like to see, that, that would involve legislative change then, I imagine, like yes. the Education Act or something has to be changed or amended. Uh, the goal, I, I imagine, would be to encourage the uh, provincial politicians and representatives to reform that system. Actually. Sure. Yes. And, 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 and so it is provincial, uh, but it's also hyper-local. Some, some of the issues that parents are bringing up are are the issues for local school boards to address as well? So mm -hmm. we're um, we're we're needing to address these things on on both of those levels. And obviously, uh, we see the advantage of devolving more of those decisions down to as local of a level as possible. The kitchen table would be the most local and the best option as far as we're concerned. But the uh, uh, but as but down to the individual school level as much as possible, uh, so that. Uh, because even the school boards are, are too big for parents to feel like they're having their voice heard. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's too bureaucratic. And so, uh, so yeah, we're, we're also working on uh, driving things down to the more local level, but obviously that some of, that, some of even that requires provincial legislation first. <laughs> yeah, and again, these school boards, I mean, some of them, I, I, I'm not seeing it as much in Alberta, but there's questionable things, but like that Toronto school board, I mean, they give me more... <laughs> you know, foundation to rant from. And they do, they, they pride themselves on how many millions of children that they, they, they represent or hundreds of sure. thousands. And some of their policies are outright crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, these are not people I want guiding my children in, in any sort of way. And, and uh, I, I understand they're elected, but obviously they're not uh, serving the parents necessarily that well. Uh, but that's a bit of a, it actually gets back to a bit of a rant I had at the start of the show about municipal politics. If we don't get involved and pay attention these fruit loops will rise to the top and, and they'll right. guide policy. So I imagine you're, you're looking to get more civic engagement as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Well, one of the problems is, you know, if you want to follow the Alberta Teachers Association party line and vote for the trustees they want, that's really easy. It's really easy to know. Uh, it's really easy to know who, uh, who you should vote for if that's, if that's the viewpoint you hold. But if you, if you want someone who, say, doesn't want to abolish uh, the separate system, doesn't want to defund independent schools, doesn't want to close down unfunded home education even, um, then, then, uh, then where do you go? And, uh, and, and there is a, a knowledge gap there. So we're also working on, on trying to close that, be able to reach out to more of these people, get them on the record on, on the issues and make that available uh, to uh, regular parents who, so that, so that they can, know who to vote for in this election because you know a, about half the people who vote for their county councilor will vote for their public school school trustee in the same in the same jurisdiction so and it's because of a lack of knowledge well that's it i mean you ask your average person i gotta admit i, I don't know ask your average person who their local school trustees <laughs> sure. are and they probably don't even know the name i can name my mla i can name my member of parliament i can name a bunch of cabinet ministers because i'm a political weenie but school <laughs> trustees well since my kids aren't in the system any longer either but it's still important sure uh, we forget about that. We neglect it, and if we neglect any democratic exercise, we're not going to get a better outcome. That's right. That's right. And and um, and we know we know that the people towing the uh, ATA party line are going to show up at these elections. It's, so that leads to this unbalanced unbalanced system where where one side of this argument is heavily overrepresented, and we and 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 we're and we're just not showing up at the table. And decisions are made by the people who show up, as always. 
Well, it sounds like a, a great initiative and really interesting. So I appreciate you coming in to, to talk to us about this today. And maybe just one more time to the audience, you know, how can people find you guys? Make sure, you know, they can catch these meetings in person if they can and uh, and just get more information about your organization in general. Sure. AlbertaParentsUnion.com, uh, .ca, sorry. <laughs> Alberta Parents, AlbertaParentsUnion.ca uh, is uh, the place to find all of that. We've got an events tab that's telling you where. Now we've got all our events booked. We've actually gotten venues everywhere but high level Lacrete. If, if anyone knows anyone there that could get us a spot, that's great. We're working on that. Uh, might, might have that done by the end of the day even, but, but, uh, uh, but everywhere else in the province we've got booked. So you can find where we are in your area and then, um, uh, and sign up, uh, sign up for the uh, uh, mailing list so that you can know when we're having events in the future as well. Excellent. Well, thank you again. And so uh, we'll watch your uh, movement uh, Carefully, and I'm sure we'll probably have you in to talk again. Okay, thanks so much, Corey. Thank you. Thank you.